talking about Star Wars. Yes. Is the, so, the must-see this Christmas, isn't it? So, basically, it's to say at the beginning that, you know, obviously everybody's very, very worried about plot spoilers, so let's try to avoid giving away anything about the plot. Let's just say, obviously, this is... Uh, this takes place sometime after Return of the Jedi, it's episode seven. At the very beginning, there is a scroll which sets up a battle between good and evil. And all I'll say about the story is that it involves a scavenger, Ray, played by Daisy Ridley, who teams up with a renegade stormtrooper, played by John Boyega, on an adventure which reunites friends old and new. Now, we don't even have a clip. What we have is a montage of stuff which was available from the trailers. So even this is going to be spoiler free. Who are you? I'm no one. I was raised to do one thing. But I've got nothing to fight for. Nothing will stand in our way. Finish what you started. There are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. It's come a long way since George Lucas, isn't it? It has. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I never clicked with the original Star Wars films. When the first ones came out, I was very wedded to the idea of, you know, darker science fiction, like you know, Solaris and uh, Silent Running to some extent. And so I, I couldn't quite get on with this Buck Rogers stuff. When the prequels came out, I was old enough to think, well, they're nothing like as good as the originals. And they had that kind of weightless digital quality. And I think even the original Star Wars fans were sort of disappointed by the people. So I went into this as somebody who really isn't a Star Wars aficionado. And I have to say the great victory of it is, is that it made me feel for the first time like a 12 year old watching a Star <laughs> Wars movie. I thought it was really exciting and engaging and dramatic and tragic. I mean, one of the things I like very much about it is it has a feeling of physical heft. It's shot on film 35mm and 65mm, and there are certain sequences in it, particularly the sort of the desert scenes, in which you get a sense of that sort of Lawrence of Arabia grandeur, which, which was so absent from the Lucas prequels. You also have characters who are, you know, you're interested in their story, you're interested in what they're doing, but they ride that very, very fine line between uh, on the one hand, you know, interstellar adventure. On the other hand, humour. There is, There are jokes in this movie that are genuinely funny in a way that so many comedies don't manage to have. Now, the thing that really surprised me was I watched it in a packed cinema with people who were real sort of Star Wars aficionados and would, you could feel the yeah. anticipation and the minute the, the opening thing, you know, long ago, Galaxy Far Away, everybody was really excited. But there was also a sense they didn't want to be disappointed. And the best thing about the film was not only did it not disappoint them, it really captured my imagination and suddenly I found that I was surrounded by crowds of people who were laughing, who were cheering, who were gasping and I suddenly realised I was one of them. <laughs> and it was, I have to say it was a very, very strange experience and it comes down to J.J. Abrams for me. I mean, I've always thought he was a, a, a fine director and he does hear what he did with the Star Trek movies, which is that sense of taking it back to the original, taking it back to the roots, but also going back to the future, using that as a way of looking forward. Daisy Ridley and John Boyega were terrific, uh, really good at sort of holding the attention and sort of the, the, uh, new characters that you really engage with. And as I said, for me, it was like finally going, oh, I see, I get this. And I confess, that I've seen it twice. You've and, seen it you have and the, come Twice in 24 hours. And the second time round, the first time I saw it, I saw an IMAX 2D and I thought it was, you know, it was thoroughly immersive. I didn't feel any need for stereoscopy at all. But both times round, I thought this is really satisfying. It has that J.J. Abrams sense of heft. You know what I mean by heft? Mm -hmm. you, know, you feel that the... The, the, the dogfights have weight. You feel that there is some actual physicality about them, which was so lacking from the, from the overly well, digitised prequels. You will hardly be surprised. I just saw that, that uh, $57 million in the opening night, which was the record, and people are talking about $3 billion in total, including the merchandising, yes. which George Lucas very craftily the one thing, made sure he the, got a... The one thing I would say about that is it's very easy to assume that something like this is going to be a massive hit, OK? But... It's also 
really, really difficult to make a movie that, that will play with the fans and also play to the audience who aren't completely invested in it. And if it does end up doing titanic business, no pun intended, sorry, um, if it does end up doing that, it will be because of repeat viewing as be and because both groups of people really like it. And for me, as I said, for somebody who was never a Star Wars, I mean, I really wasn't on the side of Star Wars before. I kind of just thought it was a distraction. I was sold on it. I was completely sold on it. Sherpa. Sure, yeah, totally, totally.